In this video, we are going to go in depth with PSP emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. <laughs> I've had a lot of renewed interest in the PSP as of late, having recently picked up a new, actual physical PSP in the PSP Go. I've been using my Vita as a PSP for the last few years, but having the original system again has been a lot of fun. And as such, I wanted to get my PSP RetroArch tutorial back up to date with the latest setup methods. Now, this guide is assuming that you have already installed RetroArch using one of my provided methods. If not, check out the RetroArch playlist in the description below for one of those setup methods. But let's dive in. To get started with PSP emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch, we need a PPSSPP system folder. I have one pre-assembled for all of you and was included with my Xbox RetroArch files download that was in that original Xbox RetroArch setup video. But if you didn't download it then, you can download it now. So link in the description below to download this file. And once you have it downloaded, just get it extracted. It's in zip format, so you should be able to use pretty much anything to get it good to go. And once you get it extracted, open up the folder, and you should see a nice PPSSPP folder right here, along with some extra folders to get Dolphin set up, Final Burn Neo, Neo Geo CD, things like that. But we're focusing on PSP here. So get this PPSSPP folder, and we just need to place it into our RetroArch system folder. So if you have moved your RetroArch system folder into a USB drive of some variety, Get that USB drive hooked up to your computing device of choice, get it opened, find the system folder you created, and then drag that PPSSPP folder right on in. And once that transfer is complete, it is ready to go. Now if you're running your system folder from the internal SSD, just go ahead and launch into Durango FTP and start your FTP server. And then using your method of choice, whether it's an FTP program or if you're on Windows, the Windows file browser, just open up your Xbox file share, navigate into your local folder, find your RetroArch folder, local state, system, and then drag that PPSSPP folder right on over and let it do the transfer. And with that transfer complete, we are ready to move on to setting up PSP games. Now, PSP games can be in a variety of formats. The most common is going to be ISO, or you can compress them down into CSO. Or if you have decrypted uh, PSN games, they're typically in PBP format. Now, in my setup, I typically use CSO games for emulation. Saves on a little bit of space. You don't get as much of the loading issues that you saw on physical PSP hardware. So I typically like to do this, but you can leave them in ISO format. It's fine. So I have a couple of ISO format games still in my PSP games folder here. But I'm going to go ahead and convert those over to CSO right now using the Max CSO um, program here. So I will have a link in my description below where you can download this. But just put it into your PSP folder directory. And then select all of the games you want to convert. And then just drag them right into the program and it will compress them for you. And just be patient with it while it does its thing. And now that the conversion process is finished, you can see it saves quite a bit of space on some games, not as much on others, but spa save space is save space, but whatever. I could go ahead and delete those ISOs and max CSO from my PSP games folder. And now I just need to transfer my PSP games onto my preferred storage medium. So for me, I am using my USB drive for game storage. So I'm just gonna open up my games folder and drag my PSP games right on in and let it do its thing. And with that transfer complete, I can just close out of my USB drive. Now, if you're storing your games on the internal SSD on dev mode through the S drive, just go back into your Xbox uh, FTP share that you already had running. Go to your S drive, program files, Windows apps, find your RetroArch folder, the one with the X64 at the end, the games folder that you created, and then drag your PSP games right on in. But once that transfer is complete, you can just go ahead and close out of everything, and we will continue on with uh, getting things set up in RetroArch. Once you've booted into RetroArch, we're free to begin loading up our PSP content. So one method of doing so, go to load content, navigate down to the directory you have your game stored in. So for USB users on dev mode, they'll be under E. For USB users under retail mode, they'll be in D. And for users using the internal SSD, you should have that set to S. And then you navigate down to Program Files, Windows Apps, your RetroArch folder, your Games folder. Find your PSP Games folder, choose a game, choose a core, tell it to run. 
or they might be located under D if you have a screwed up dev mode file system. But anyway, you could go into your directory, find your games folder, find your PSP games folder, choose a game, choose a core, tell it to run. Now I personally don't really care for this method, I like to make a games playlist instead. So to do this with CSO files, you can head down to import content and do a manual scan. If you left your games as ISO files, you can probably do scan directory just fine, but for CSO, we do need to do a manual scan. Navigate to your content directory and choose your PSP game folder. And tell it to scan this directory. System name, press right on your D-pad to navigate down to Sony and find PlayStation Portable. Default core, same thing, right on the D-pad to scroll down to Sony and find PlayStation Portable PPSSPP. Now if you have your game separated into subfolders, make sure scan recursively is on, and then we could just go ahead and start the scan. And with it completed, we now have a PlayStation Portable games playlist here on the left with all of our games inside. And now from here, we could just scroll down, choose a game, and tell it to run. And if you have everything placed correctly, you should have fonts for your PSP games, and everything should be looking good. Now a quick note on PSP fonts. Sony's font on the PSP was copyrighted, so there is a replacement font included as part of PPSSPP. If you want to switch it out for the original PSP font, I do have a video tutorial on my channel on how to dump that font file and replace it. But there you go, you are now all set with default PSP gaming on Xbox Series X and S. But there is certainly more to talk about when it comes to PSP emulation. The first of which being how to add DLC files into your PPSSPP install. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out of my PSP emulation here real quick. And quit out of RetroArch. Now if you're relying on Durango FTP, go ahead and get that file server started up again. To add DLC to your PPSSPP emulation, you need to access your RetroArch save folder. So if you moved your save folder to USB, it's just under your saves folder, and you'll see a new PSP folder here. So you can enter this, make a new folder, and just name it game. And then from here, you can open up that game folder and drag your PSP DLC right inside in the folder structure it should have been provided with. I don't happen to have any PSP DLC on hand to demo this, but this is the process here. So if you're relying on Durango FTP because your saves are on the Q drive, open up your Xbox FTP file share, local folder, RetroArch folder, local state, saves, PSP folder, new folder, game, open it up, drag your DLC inside, and that should be the entire process. But since we're already here, this might be a good time to talk about adding cheats to our PSP emulation. So head back into the PSP folder on your internal storage or external storage, and we're going to make a new folder and name it Cheats. Then we can go ahead and open that up, and you can add your cheat INI files directly into this folder. So here is an entire database of cheats that I could then just add into that saves folder. There's a lot of them, so it might take a while. But if you are interested in this cheats database, I will have a link to this forum post on PPSSPP that I found them at. So just click on the downloads here, extract them, and then you can add them to your new cheats folder. And likewise, if you have your saves folder on USB, you can open it up, go into your PSP folder, make a new folder, name it cheats, and then you can just drag those all into your, whoops. All right, well, oops. Um, anyway, you can drag those into your cheats folder. Now the cheats INI files are pretty interesting to look at. So there's a ton of cheats included in a lot of these, but you might not be interested in all of them. So you'll need to know the game code for your specific game that you're trying to use cheats for. You could use Google to look them up. And you'll see that there is a C0 line next to the name of a cheat. So for any cheats you're not interested in, you could change this 0 to a 1 to activate certain cheats. And you will need to come into this INI file and change this every time you want to turn a cheat on or a specific cheat on or off. You could use the RetroArch settings to turn all cheats on or off if you want. But I'm just going to go ahead and configure my Soul Calibur cheats file here. But now back on RetroArch, I'm going to go ahead and load up into Soul Calibur. And there's one more step we need to do to get cheats up and running. 
So once you have your game turned on, open up the RetroArt Quick Menu, scroll down to Options, and look for the Cheats option here. So it's going to be the very last one here at the bottom. So we could go ahead and turn that on. And then I'm just going to go ahead and close the content, and then tell it to run again. And just to confirm, going back into my RetroArt Quick Menu under Options, I can see that Internal Cheat Support has been turned on. So it turns out that the cheats that I have selected for Soul Calibur are not cooperating, but that's the basic process there. You might experience some unexpected results, so do be aware of that when running cheats, as you have seen here. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that option back off. So yes, use cheats at your own discretion. Do know it might break things, but you can also get fun effects like 60 FPS modes in 30 FPS games and things like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the advanced core options available to us within PPSSPP. So going back into our RetroArt Quick Menu, if we head down to Options, our first option is to change the internal resolution of our emulated PSP games. So on Xbox Series X and S, you should be able to run these games at practically 4K just fine. If you start to experience lag where you didn't have any before, you can go ahead and just turn it back down. But for this one, full 4K, sure, let's do it. Now, this option does require a content restart, so you just go up, close the content, and then rerun it. Your guard up. And as you can see, my game is running at a I'm much higher anymore. resolution. And since it is practically Battle 4K, one. it is filling up my Fight. entire screen, even with imagery still turned on, which is really fun. But heading back into the options menu, our next option is the CPU core. Leave this on JIT. Next, you could set a locked CPU speed, so the PSP actually supported a number of frequencies from 222 MHz up to 333 MHz. So, leaving this off is fine, the games will run at the default core speed that they were meant to, but you can also just force an overclocked speed if your game ran at a lower one. Can help with some in-game frame drops on games that relied on lower speeds. Or for homebrew software that needs to have a manual speed set, you could set that here. But for the most part, you're fine just leaving this off. Next up, language. You can choose the language for your emulation. Confirmation button, you can choose between cross or circle here, so A and B on your controller. Default is cross, which is A, so if you want it to be B, you could change it to circle. Next up, rendered mode. Leave this on buffered. GPU hardware TNL, leave this on. Next, anisotropic filtering, you can crank this up to 16x. Spline slash Bezier curves quality, you can crank this up to high if you wish. We're gonna skip over frame skip because bleh. Next, vertex cache, you can leave this off since we're using Direct 3D 11, this is mostly an OpenGL thing. Fast memory, you can leave this one on. Block transfer GPU, leave this one on. Buffered frames, this helps with input lag, so leave this on up to two. Software scanning, leave this one on. Lazy texture caching, we can leave this off. We can also leave off retain change textures, force real clock, and disable slower effects. Now, lower resolution for effects. This it will be of interest to those of you that are upscaling and find that certain game effects look kind of broken. You can turn this on to um, make those effects appear in lower res, but at least they will appear correctly. So there's three options, safe, balance, and aggressive. Safe and balanced are uh, typically the go-tos. Next, we have texture scaling level. So you can upscale your internal resolution. It isn't really touching the textures. So here you can set texture scaling. So we can set that to like 4X and then we can choose a scaling type from XBRZ, hybrid by cubic and hybrid by cubic. Most people prefer XBRZ. Texture shader, this is Vulcan only so we don't have to worry about it. And then texture filtering. So we could choose between a bunch of different ones here. So it's set to auto by default. And that is just fine for most cases, but you can set it to nearest if you prefer that uh, more blocky look, linear, or auto max quality. Texture deposterize, if you're upscaling, turn this one on. Next up is texture replacement, so this is for those of you that like HD texture packs. From the info I've gathered, you need to create a new textures folder within your PPSSPP save directory and then insert the HD texture pack in the folder structure provided into that folder and then turn this on to have it take effect. But I'm not gonna be covering it more than this at this time. Next up, IO timing method, you can leave this on fast. Ignore bad memory access, leave this on. And then last up was that internal cheats support 
thing that we demoed earlier. But once you have all the options set the way you want, if you want to save specific options for specific games, you can come up to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file. But diving back into gameplay, you can see how your effects have changed the way your PSP games look, so if you prefer the smooth look with the XBZR texture upscaling and things like that, you're all good to go. Now one last option I want to cover here real quick is the use of shaders on the PPSSP Core. So heading into our RetroArch Quick menu, head down to the Shaders tab, and turn them on if they're not on already. And we can go into Load here, Shaders, and there's a handheld folder here, and a console border folder. And inside is a PSP border shader that you can use to get some really awesome picture quality. Now you might not see the shader take effect immediately, so you can just back out and resume your content and you should see it pop up. Now depending on the resolution of your display is going to be how much you want to scale it up. So on my 4K display here, you can see that the 4X one is barely taking up any room. So I'm just actually going to come back in here to my quick menu and load up a bigger one. I'm going to go for the full 6X. And now when I open it up, there we go. That 6x scaled border is taking up a good majority of my screen real estate. But as you can see, it's a little bit cut off because I have integer scaling enabled as well as a core provided aspect ratio. So if you plan on using the console border shaders, you want to head back into your quick menu. Press B to head out to the RetroArch main menu here. Go into settings, video. Scaling and then we want to turn integer scaling off that way we just get the full screen display So since I chose the 6x scale Not all of the console border is visible. So if I went back down to 5x I'd be able to see more of that PSP border But for this demonstration, this is just fine But going back into our quick menu if you turn off integer scaling for this core but want it on for other ones, you need to go into your overrides and save the core override so that way these changes don't take effect for other cores. But now I'm able to play my PSP games in a PSP screen border. And it looks really awesome. And we got the grid lines and it just looks really cool. Now unfortunately it does appear rather dark. But if you go back into your shaders go into the shader parameters and we can increase the gamma just a bit to give us back some more brightness but there we go but once you have a shader set the way you want head back into that shaders tab go to the save option here and you can save shaders as a core preset or a game preset so I like doing core presets so that way every time I load up a PSP game, this is the shader that will greet me. But that's going to do it for PSP emulation on the Xbox Series X and S. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a couple of huge favors here at the end. If you haven't already, hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content coming and I'd love to have you along for the ride. If you'd like to further help support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Big shout out to all of our current champions who have done so much to keep us going over the last few years. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.